In this video, we're going to take a look at section 5.5 on systems of inequalities. Um, so these inequalities will have two variables. Um, and so finding the solution set to an inequality of two variables is going to involve graphing. So we're going to have to graph on the Cartesian coordinate system. And there will be an entire region of solutions to that inequality or to that system of inequalities. And the way we indicate that solution set is we shade in the points on the Cartesian coordinate system that match the solutions to the inequalities. Um, so while this section is entitled Systems of Inequalities, we actually we'll start off with problems of just single individual inequalities. So really it's half and half. So half of it will be problems with just one inequality of two variables. And then we'll have the other half be more than one. What's kind of interesting about these um, inequalities is that you can have more than one, or sorry, more than two, and still have a solution set. Um, with equations, if you have two variables, you only want two equations. If you have more than two, chances are you won't be able to satisfy all three or four equations in that system if there's only two variables. And so there won't be a solution. But with inequalities, you can have um, more than two, and there's still gonna be some region. It gets chopped down smaller and smaller, but you could even have potentially like, you know, four or six different inequalities, and there could still be some region that would still satisfy all six. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the process that I'm going to advocate for solving these inequalities of two variables. So what I would recommend, step one, is to solve for y if possible. Um, it may not always be possible to do that, however, and if that's the case, we just have to adjust. We have to find some other way of ascertaining the solution set. But if you are able to solve it for y, the next step will be to graph it as an equation um, so when we did inequalities of just one variable, if you'll recall, we graphed the solution set on the real number line, and then we would indicate whether the endpoint was included or not by using a parentheses or a bracket or open circle, closed circle, whichever notation you like to use. Uh, we have to do the same thing here. So the way we will indicate whether the graph we're drawing is included with the solution set we're about to shade in we will use a solid line to indicate that we should include the graph with the region that gets shaded in. And we will use a dashed line to draw the graph if we do not want to include the graph with the shaded region that we uh, get for the solution set. And so, in, you know, when do you want to include it? Well, if there's an equals to, you want to include the graph in the solution set. So you draw it as a solid line. If there's no equals to in the inequality, you do not want to include the graph with the solution set. And so you draw it as a dashed line instead. Uh, on Math Excel, there will be a toggle option. So when you're going to draw your graph on Math Excel, you'll see there's two options. One's a solid and one's a dashed, and you have to make sure you select the proper one. I find it's kind of difficult to go back and make that change after you've drawn the graph. So you really want to try to catch that before you start plotting the points. You know, make that selection. Should it be solid or should it be a dashed graph? Once you have the graph, that graph is the boundary to the region of the solution set. But you have to decide which region is actually going to be your solution set. So, for example, if you draw a line, it's dividing the Cartesian coordinate system into two regions, one of those regions will be your solution set that you're going to shade in. <clears throat> and the line will be the boundary to that solution set. And then so you have to decide which region to shade in. And if you solve it for y, so step three can only be uh, followed through if you are able to accomplish step one. If you're able to solve it for y, then it's a simple question of above or below. If it's y is greater than whatever, you want to shade above the graph. Just go up. Everywhere your graph exists, you want all the points above it. And so you shade the region above the graph. If it's y is less than something, you want to shade below. You want the y-coordinates that are smaller than the y-coordinates on that graph. So you will shade below the graph. All right. 
if you were unable to solve it for y, you would need to reason based on the equation, find some other kind of reasoning to decide which area should be shaded in. An example that I think will be in my video is um, if you have a circle as a graph. In that case, you could not solve that equation for y. So then the question becomes, do you shade inside the circle or do you shade outside the circle? And there's a way to reason through that. If you are having trouble reasoning that out, um, you could do test points. And that's probably the way you'll see Math Excel suggest that you do these problems in general. I find students don't tend to like that process because it's a, it's, it's a lot of writing, it's kind of tedious. You pick a point out, you plug it in, see if it works or not. It's not too bad if there's only one inequality, but it gets a little bit worse when there's a system of inequalities. But you could just test out points, right? Because when you have a graph with two regions, one of those regions, everything there will be a solution. So if one point works, all the points will work in that region. So you just pick a point out, see if it works in the inequality. If it does, that whole region is good. You shade the whole thing in. If it doesn't, you should check the other region. Now, if there's only two regions, if one doesn't work, the other one has to be the right answer. But again, with systems of inequalities, you'll have to check multiple regions if one doesn't work. You keep checking until you find one that does work. Anyways, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's, let's take a look at some examples. All right, so let's graph this inequality. We have y is less than or equal to 3x minus 5. Um, so step one, solve it for y. It's already done. It's already solved for y. That's why I picked this one first. So we'll jump right into step two. We are going to graph this as if it were an equation. So we're going to graph y equals 3x minus 5. All right, so graph this as if it were an equation. This is a linear equation. So I mentioned this in my last video in 5.3 that one of my favorite things about having chapter five at the end of the course, and, the, and not only the content of the chapter, but just the examples and the direction that the textbook author chooses to go with these concepts, it, it's a great review of a lot of things that we've done for the whole semester. So while this problem is a linear equation, which hopefully you can recognize because it fits the form of y equals mx plus b, um, we will be seeing other types. I already mentioned a moment ago, circles might come up. Um, there's gonna be parabolas, there's gonna be other types of equations. And so it's a review of the different kinds of equations that we've been graphing throughout the entire semester. To graph a line, especially if you have it solved for y, the best way to do that is to use the slope, which in this case is three, and the y-intercept, which is negative five, better, uh, described as zero comma negative five. And so you plot that point zero comma negative five, which would be right here. And the slope is three. So I think of that as three over one. That tells me to go up three to the right one. And that will help me find another point. So from here, I go up three to the right one, mark that as another point on the graph. And so now I have two points. With two points, you have your line. All you have to do is connect those two points with a straight line. All right, before I do that, I have to make sure to ask myself the question, should I draw this line as a solid line or a dashed line? On Math Excel, like I said, you might be able to just go ahead and draw it and then go back and change it if you need to. But on paper, you kind of can't do that, right? Once you've drawn the graph, you've drawn it. And if you end up being wrong about the way you drew it, you have to erase it, draw it again, right? So we want to get it right the first time when we draw it. Uh, and we would have been okay this time because we have an equals to here. We want to graph this line as a solid line. So draw it like you normally would. And so I'll use the uh, line drawing tool here to make sure that this is drawn as well as possible. I think that should go about right there. And then we'll try to start from right here. It's a little bit... A little bit of a disconnect there, which kind of bugs me, but um, that's fine. In fact, I think that should kind of go right there, but I'll just kind of do it like this. All right, so this line, if you think about what you've just discovered here, this line represents all the points where y equals 3x minus 5. So every ordered pair on this line would make this equation true. Every ordered pair on this line is a solution to this equation. And that is part of what we're looking for, right? We want y to equal 3x minus 5, 
but we're also looking for where y is less than 3x minus 5. So I also want all the points where the y coordinates are smaller than 3 times the x coordinate minus 5. On this line is where the y coordinates equal 3 times the x coordinate minus 5. I want all the points where the y coordinates are smaller than that as well. And so in which direction do y coordinates get smaller? They get smaller if you move down, right? So for every point that's on this line, I want all the points that are below those points as well, because those are the points that have y being less than 3x minus 5. So step three, we have to decide, do we shade above or below? We are going to shade below in this case, right? Because we have y is less than something. So less than tells me shade below. And so I will shade the region below the line. All right. And I probably, I should adjust the uh, size of this because I don't want to make you sit here and watch me color this in uh, for 10 minutes. So let's see if I can make this bigger. Um, okay, that's better. Okay. Now, if you're in my class and you're taking this test on paper, please don't do what I'm doing right now. Don't spend five minutes shading in every square inch of the region. That's not necessary for me to understand your answer. So, um, you know, just uh, 10, not even 10 seconds, five seconds of just kind of scribbling in this area is enough to indicate to me the region that you've selected and that you're trying to cover the entire region. So, all right, um, so that, that's that problem. So every point in this region would make this inequality true. And you could test it out if you'd like. So, you know, if I pick a point anywhere in this region, so if I pick this point right here, like this is eight comma negative three, I can plug it in here, right? So negative three for Y and eight for X. And I don't know why I put equal, should be less than or equal to minus five. And this should come out true, right? Negative three is less than 24 minus five. Negative three is less than or equal to 19. That's true, right? So this point is a solution to that inequality. Every point in this region is going to make this inequality true. All right, and also any point on the line itself. So again, the solid line here is designed to kind of blend in with that shaded region because it's part of the solution set as well. All right, let's take a look at another example. Um, so here, same, we're going to go through the same process. Step one, already done for me, right? It's already solved for y. Step two, we're going to graph y equals negative 9x squared. All right. This one is not a linear equation. This one, in fact, is a quadratic function, which means that the graph is a parabola. So we have to think back to how do we graph parabolas from chapter two or chapter three. We talked about graphing parabolas in both of those uh, chapters. All right, excuse me, I just ate, so I'm having trouble. Every time I eat and then I start talking, you know, it's kind of, I never burp, but it's always kind of like just indigestion. So I have to kind of, you know, adjust. I'm sorry it, it, if it looks funny, so. Um, this one's kind of hard to graph, actually. Um, to graph a quadratic function, we talked about in chapter three all the different features of a quadratic function that you want to graph. Uh, the primary one being the vertex. That's the most important point. Um, but also the x and y intercepts. Um, so we talked about finding y intercept, x intercept. Uh, this, the axis of symmetry was another one. Uh, the difficulty in applying that process to this function is that even finding all of these things, you don't get much information out of this equation. The vertex is going to be at zero comma zero, right? So if you compare it to, for example, this formula that we learned back in chapter, chapter three, let's try that again, squared plus K. Remember the vertex is at H and K. Well, H is missing here, so it's zero. K also is missing here, so it's zero. So the vertex is at zero, zero. The y-intercept, you plug in zero for X, you solve for Y, you get Y equals zero. So the y-intercept is at zero comma zero. The X-intercept, 
you set y equal to 0, and then you solve for x. Well, when you divide negative 9, it'll still be 0. Take the square root of both sides, you still get 0. So the x-intercept is at 0, 0. So when you go to find all of this good information, it's not so good in this particular problem because you just get the same point every time. It's at 0, 0. And so you're going to need more information. Math Excel needs the vertex, so that's the first point you want to graph, but you still need at least one more point for Math Excel to even draw this parabola. So, so if you try to find this, you know, good information and it just keeps leading back to the same point like it does here, just pick a different random point. And the way you get a different random point is pick some number for x, plug it into the equation, and find out what y is equal to from the equation. And that gives you a point. Again, you can pick whatever x you want, but the numbers here get really big really quickly. So you are you need to keep it small. You're going to have to choose one. I mean, that's the only thing that's going to fit over here anyways. If I even x equals 2 produces a number that's going to be too big. So I'm, pick, I'm going to pick x equals 1. Plug that into my equation. So I get y equals negative 9 times 1 squared. That's negative 9 times 1, which is going to be negative 9. Okay, so we get 1 comma negative 9. So let me scroll down so you can see where I'm putting this point. Uh, 1 comma negative 9, which will be right here. The axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line through the vertex, tells me that there has to be a mirror image point the same distance away on the other side of the uh, axis of symmetry. So this point also has to be on the graph. And that's going to be enough for us to see how to draw this. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the parabola using these three points. Don't make it a V shape. That's a mistake I'll have students make on the test because with three points, it always looks like a triangle, you know. So it's not a rigid, uh, you know, graph with a corner. It's going to be curved, right? So draw it. It's going to be a sharp curve, but still make it rounded. Don't make it jagged. When I go to draw this, I before I start putting my pencil to the paper, I need to ask myself, is this going to be a solid line or a dashed line? And in this case, there's no equals to, so I'm going to have to graph this as a dashed line. So make sure on Math Excel that you change that toggle from solid to dashed. And then connect the points. Okay, there it goes. Okay. All right. I don't know why it does that every once in a while. All right, so I'm going to draw a parabola, and it's going to look really bad because it's a dashed line, and it's already hard enough to draw on here as it is. It's going to look like this. Oh, okay, I kind of messed up at the end there. Let's see. It's going to take those extra lines away. There we go. Okay. So trying to make it a little bit easier for you to see on the screen, but it's right here. That's the parabola, and it's a dashed line instead of a solid one. All right. And then step three is, do I shade above or below the parabola? Now, when you look at a parabola, especially one that has such a sharp curve to it, you might be thinking, oh, do I sh shade inside of this parabola or outside? But when you solve it for y, you never want to frame it that way. It's not, do I shade to the left or to the right, or do I shade inside or outside? It's above or below, right? When you solve it for y, that is the way you want to frame the question. And so uh, in this case, we have y is greater than, right? So since y is greater than something, we are going to shade above that graph. So everywhere I've drawn this graph, for every point on this parabola, I want to take all the points that are above it. So I want to shade everywhere above the parabola, which is going to be the bigger looking region. I mean, they, they both have infinitely many points. So it's, it's not really that one is bigger than the other, but based on the the region as we're looking at it right now based on the graph that we have in front of us it's going to look like we're shading in the big region excuse me all right so let me shade that and again try now on the test when i'm grading i'm i'm forgiving you know if you have a little bit of trouble staying within the lines you know i, I can overlook that but we do want to make sure we're not crossing over i mean that is that is the case. So when you're drawing it near the graph, try to do it carefully so that you're not crossing over the, the line into the other region. And then, like I said, everywhere else on here, all these points are all, they're all solutions to this inequality. So if it crosses just a little bit, like because of some careless stray marks, that's fine. If it's more than that, if it seems like you're not really understanding the concept of this is the boundary to your solution set and you're going over that boundary a little bit too often 
or a little bit too much, then I might, you know, take some points off of your test when I'm grading. All right, let's kind of pick things up here a little bit. Um, all of my videos have been fairly lengthy and I apologize for that. Um, I'll try to uh, stay on track here. So and maybe this one will be a little bit shorter than the other ones. So here, step one, can't be done. So, so far I'm doing kind of bad on my examples because for the first two examples, they were already done for us, right? So we didn't have to do step one, it was already done. And then this example, you can't actually even do it. So I have not yet given you an example where we actually do something in step one. You can't solve this for y, right? Because if you do, you subtract the x squared to the other side, then you have to do square roots to both sides. And it's really unclear you know, you have to be careful about what does that square root do with the inequality? Um, and also remember, if you take the square root of both sides, there's a plus or minus. So how does that figure in as well? And it's, it's kind of complicated. So we should avoid that, right? So we're going to skip step one and acknowledge that we just couldn't do it. We could not solve for Y, which means when I get to step three, I cannot frame the question as do I shade above or below? I'm going to have to think of it some other way. So I'm skipping step one, I'm just gonna to go to step two. And so I can still do step two even without step one. I'm gonna graph this as an equation. I'm gonna graph x squared plus y squared equals four. Graph this as if it were an equation. And hopefully you recognize, and I kind of referred to it at the beginning of the video, this is the equation for a circle, right? So this is something we studied way back in chapter one, so it's been a while. But this is the formula for the equation of a circle. And so to graph a circle, you want to use the center and the radius. The center is at h comma k. In this case, h is missing. There's no number here for h, so it's zero. k also is missing, so it's zero. So the center will be at zero, zero. And then four is not the radius, but it's the radius squared. r squared is equal to four. And then to solve that for r, you take the square root of both sides, you get two. You don't have to do plus or minus in this case because the radius can't be negative, right? So it's just the radius is gonna be two. And so the radius is two. To graph the circle, you start at the center, which is at zero, zero. And then you wanna find all the points that are two away from that center. I want all the points in every direction that are two away from zero comma zero. But measuring a distance of two diagonally is hard to do. The easy points to find are vertical and horizontal. So two up would be this point here, two down would be that point here, two to the left and two to the right. So I find those four points because we can measure those distances exactly. And then I connect those four points in a circular fashion, right? I'm gonna draw a circle through those four points and make it look as round and, and perfectly symmetric as I possibly can. Before I go to draw it though, remember this extra little detail, do we wanna make it a solid line or a dashed line? In this case, it's gonna be a solid line because there's an equals to there. So I'm gonna connect these points as a solid circle. Oh, um, I, I wish there was a shape tool on here somewhere. I, I can draw a line, but I don't really see a shape tool, unfortunately. So I'm going to, I'll try to do this by hand again, but it's probably going to look pretty bad. I mean, I don't expect perfection on your test either. So, okay. I kind of messed up at the end, but otherwise it wasn't too bad. Okay. Maybe I should uh, just redo that one more time. Okay. Let's do this. We'll go three quarters of the way around. No, can't even make it that far. Let's go halfway around. Okay. Every time I say how far around I'm going to go, I always, I fall short of it and then we'll go back this way. Okay. That's probably the best I'm gonna be able to do. Now, for step three, I have to decide whether I should shade above or below, not above or below. We couldn't do that because we couldn't solve it for y. So we, it's, we don't wanna ask ourselves above or below. We have to think of it in another way. And I mentioned it, I think, at the beginning of the video that for a circle, the way you wanna frame the question is, do you wanna shade inside the circle or outside the circle? And in this case, because we have a less than here, right? So remember, all the points on this circle are where, um, so I'm putting the wrong thing there, are where x squared plus y squared is equal to four. I'm looking for, for where all the points are located. 
where x squared plus y squared will be smaller than that. Another way you can think of it is, this is a circle with radius 2. Well, not this one, but this one here, right? This is a circle with radius 2. Here I'm looking for all the circles that have the same center, right? Because the center here is still the same, still at 0, 0, but whose radius is less than 2, right? Because right, if it's equal to 4, the radius is exactly 2. But if it's less than 4, then the radius is going to be less than or equal to 2. And so where do I find all the circles with the same center, but with a smaller radius than 2? It's going to be inside of the circle I've just drawn. Right, so I want to shade inside of the circle in this case. So less than, you shade inside the circle. Greater than, you would shade outside the circle, if it's a circle that you're dealing with. All right, so let me, whoops, I picked the wrong thing here. Okay. All right, oh, I wanted to do that instead. Okay, uh, come on. Okay, what is it doing here? Okay, good. Okay, I wanted it to be small because it's a small area. So this is my solution set. Sorry about that. I picked the eraser by accident first, then I switched to the highlighter tool, but then it was still big sized because of the previous problems. So I switched it, but the, the indicator didn't show that to me. And so, I don't know, I was just clicking a bunch of random buttons until it finally worked. Okay. So, that's how you handle um, circles. All right. So, let's move on. That's the first half of section 5.5. Let's move on to the second half. We want to be able to solve a system of inequalities. So, in these problems, we will be given more than one inequality to juggle. But we're going to approach the problem in the same way. The first step is we will try to solve each inequality for y, if possible. Then we will graph each on the same Cartesian coordinate system, as if they were equations. Right? And still follow the same rule. We draw it as a solid graph if there's an equals to. We draw it as a dashed if it's not equals to. And you could have it mix and match. You could have one inequality where it's solid, one inequality where it's a dashed line. Uh, and then we will shade in the region that satisfies all of the inequalities simultaneously. So assuming you could solve each inequality for y, the region that you want to shade in at the end is going to be the one that satisfies each individual inequality. So it'll have to be, so for example, if our first inequality says shade below and the second one says shade above, the region we want to shade in is below the first one but above the second one. So you have to take all the inequalities into account and find the region that matches the description for all of them at the same time, right? So I'll have to be above this one, but below this one, for example, all right? Um, and then that's how you get your solution set. All right, so let's take a look at an example. So here we have the system of inequalities. Y is less than 3x plus 1, and 3x minus y is less than or equal to 5. So let's go ahead and write both of these down. All right, so this, so I see I, I was clicking a bunch of buttons and I accidentally changed the pen tool. All right, so this is the first one, and this is the second one. So we want to follow the steps for both of them. So step one, solve for y. Well, that's already done for the first inequality. But for the second inequality, it's not. I want to solve this for y, and it is something that can be solved for y. So finally, we have an example where we can actually do step one. So we're going to solve this for y by subtracting 3x to the other side. And this is a really good example to have for this. And this is why it's important that you do solve for y, because you might be thinking, well, why bother solving for y? Let's just graph it the way it is, and then if it's a less than a shade below, that's not going to happen here, right? So when you solve this for y, you have to get rid of the negative sign. So you have to divide by negative 1 on both sides to get y by itself. But when you divide by a negative on both sides, you have to flip the symbol around the other way. So that rule is still in effect here, even though there's two variables and it's a different type of problem, you know, it behaves in a different way. For inequalities, this rule is always in effect. If you multiply or divide by a negative on both sides, you have to flip the symbol around the other way. And then this negative one divides into both of these. So I'm going to get negative five and then plus three X. So that's solving it for Y. And you see that we will actually end up shading above whatever this graph is, not below. All right. Step two, we're going to graph these as if they're equations. So I'm going to graph y equals 3x plus 1. And also, here, I will graph y equals negative 5 plus 3x. All right. 
Let me scroll down a little bit. Okay. So these are linear equations again. So we're back to graphing lines. All right, this fits y equals mx plus b. Here the slope is 3. The y-intercept is 0, comma 1. So we'll start at 0, comma 1, which is right here. 3 tells me to go up 3 to the right 1, which would be right here. Before I connect those two points, check to see if it should be a solid line or a dashed line. In this case, it'll be dashed because there's no equals to here. And so my the line tool I have on this software doesn't let me um, make that choice. It always draws it as a solid line. So I'm going to have to draw this by hand as a dashed line. And it's probably going to look horrible, but um, I'll, I'll do the best I can. All right, so let me choose a different color here. So uh, in fact, maybe a couple more points would help. So up three to the right one again. Up three to the right one again. Let's do the same thing this way. Down three to the left one. Um, down three to the left one, maybe one more time. Okay, so here's my line. And so I'm gonna connect it with a dashed line. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I, Again, every time I like the circle when I was drawing it, like it's, I do a good job until I say something and then, it, then I mess it up. So I, this is right where I said, this didn't turn out too bad. And then, then that happens. So, all right, that's good enough though. All right, so this is, this is, and you don't want to lose track of which graph is which. Now, this one will be easy to keep track of because this graph is going to be a dashed line. This one is going to be a solid line. So we'll know which one's which by which one's dashed, which one's solid. But sometimes you might want to label them or it's just somehow mentally keep track of which line corresponds to which inequality, right? So this is for the y equals 3x plus 1 inequality. Let's do the same thing here. The y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 5. It's a 0 there. Again, the slope is 3. So this one actually is interesting in another way. The slopes are the same, right? So what is that going to mean? That means when I graph these lines, they will be parallel, right? Uh, slopes, how do we want to say this? Parallel lines are lines that have the same slope. And vice versa. If lines have the same slope, they're going to be parallel. And so we'll start at 0, comma, negative 5, which is going to be right here. And then the slope is 3, so we're going to go up 3 to the right 1, and that gives me this point here. Um, and then again, I'll, I'll just do that a couple more times. Um, this is at 1, so 4, up 3 to the right 1. Okay, and you see that the line, the new line I'm drawing here keeps the same distance from the first line that I drew. So they're going to be parallel. Um, down three to the right one, that's gonna be right there. Okay, and then this time, we're gonna draw the line as a solid line. Um, so I could use my line drawing tool. Let's try that for this one. I'll just start here and draw a line that's going through all those, oh, of course. Um, let's try one more time. Okay, that stayed where I wanted it to. And this is gonna be a little bit disjointed, but should be okay. All right, and then step three is to shade the region that satisfies both of these inequalities at the same time, right? So here I have y, whoops, I have y is less than, so I would want to shade below this line, right? And this is the dashed line, so I want to shade below the dashed line because for that inequality, it's a less than, but above the solid line. Right, so here I'm going to shade above. All right, so below the dashed line, but at the same time, I have to stay above the solid line. And it's probably the region you would have guessed. So there's three regions here. You know, which one do you think is going to be the one that we want to shade in? The one sandwiched in between. Um, and that is what ends up happening, but it doesn't have to happen that way. So you really want to follow this process to make sure that's the region that you're supposed to shade in, right? So below the dashed line, above the solid line, it means it has to stay in this region right here. Oh gosh, I already messed up. All right. And so I'm going to try to stay within the lines the best I can. Coloring was never my strong suit. Just a little personal story that I remember from my uh, childhood. When I was in kindergarten, I was a uh, we were coloring in class. I don't know why I remember this. It's one of my earliest memories. I can't remember much before that for some reason. And I took a crayon and I was coloring with the, the 
the butt end of it, right? So the flat end. And that's how I was coloring my picture. And I remember that another student told the teacher on me, like I was using the crayon incorrectly and I got in trouble. And so that always stuck with me. Like, why does it matter if I'm coloring with the flat end of the crayon? It shouldn't matter. But I just remember being corrected that I needed to turn it around and color with the sharp end. So uh, anyways, <laughs> I was traumatized in kindergarten, so I don't like coloring anyways, and I'm not very good at it. Okay. So um, that's how you handle a system of inequalities. All right, so you have to make sure you're doing both of these below the first line, above the second line at the same time. It's going to be that region. All right, let's take a look at this one. So we have y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 49. And we have x minus y is greater than or equal to negative 7. Following the same steps, step one, solve for y, already done for us with the first inequality. But for the second inequality, we will have to do some work to make that happen. So I'm going to solve this for y. We get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 7 minus x. And then we are going to divide by negative 1 on both sides. So same thing as last problem. Because I divide by negative, I got to flip the symbol around the other way. This negative one divides into both of these, so I get positive 7 and positive x. All right, um, so that's step one. Step two, graph as if it were an equation. So we're going to graph y equals x squared minus 49 for the first inequality. For the second inequality, we will graph uh, y equals 7 plus x. Now for the second one, it's another linear equation. We'll use the slope, we'll use the y-intercept, graph a line. But for the first one, and we'll go ahead and do this one first, it is not linear, right? So this graph will not be a straight line. I can't, like, as a, as a math teacher, you know, I'd, I I think I give everybody the, the best benefit I can. So, you know, I, I think everybody's trying their best. I'm not, I don't want to make people feel bad. I don't like to say, oh, this problem's easy because it may not be easy for everybody. You know, so I try to be, you know, sensitive to those kind of things. But one of my biggest pet peeves is that I have some students where every graph is always a straight line. And so I try in class, I repeat it over and over and over as much as I can. Like not every graph is a line, right? Some graphs will have different shapes. Uh, it just so happens the first kind of graphing you learn is to graph a straight line because it's the easiest one to start with. But then you should move on from there and realize that different kinds of equations will have different kinds of shapes when you graph them, right? So if it doesn't fit the y equals mx plus b formula or ax plus by equals c, it's not a line when you graph it. It's going to have to have some other shape. The only time it's a line is if the equation looks like this, right? So if there's an x squared, that graph is not a line anymore. But again, I would sometimes have students where that just doesn't ever seem to sink in. And every time they draw a graph, it's always a straight line. There's always two points and it's a line. So now, now that I've got my rant out of the way, we want to graph this. Now I'm noticing that the image I have over here for the Cartesian coordinate system is probably not going to be adequate for the number that I'm seeing here. So again, this is quadratic. I mentioned earlier for graphing a quadratic function, the best points to look for are the vertex, the y-intercept, and the x-intercepts. And so uh, if you think of the formula, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, uh, there's no h here, right? There's no number here with the x inside of the square. So for the vertex, the x-coordinate is 0 because the h is missing. The k, however, is going to be negative 49. And now you can see why this graph is not adequate. It only goes down to negative 12. So I'm going to have to draw this graph freehand down here so that I can accommodate that number a little better. Either that or I could maybe just change these numbers out, but I don't want it to be confusing. So I will go ahead and draw a new graph right here the best I can. Oh, that was horrible, but uh, it'll be good enough for you to get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. All right, and then we're going to have... We have to get down to negative 49, so I can't go by ones here. So I'm going to go by five. Let's go by tens, actually. So this will be negative 10, negative 20, should be negative, negative 30, negative 40, 
It's supposed to be a 40. Let's just skip that. That's negative 40. There's negative 50. And so the vertex is going to be right just a hair above the negative 50 on the y-axis. Which, incidentally, because the vertex is on the y-axis, that is my y-intercept as well. So again, because they're trying to keep this equation as simple as possible, they actually take away good information from you. Like we saw in the last example with the parabola, right? The vertex was 0, 0, the y-intercept was 0, 0, the x-intercept was 0, 0. So when you try to find all that good information, because they kept the equation so simple, you actually don't get anything useful out of that like you normally do. Um, now that being said, the x-intercepts actually are worth looking for and you do get new points and that's going to be really helpful for us to have that information. So to find the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y. So we'll get 0 equals x squared minus 49. And so this is finding the x-intercept. And then we solve this for x. We could do that by factoring. So this will factor as x plus 7, x minus 7. Set each factor equal to 0, and you end up getting x is equal to negative 7, and x is equal to positive 7. So we get two x-intercepts. We get negative 7, 0, positive 7, 0. And those will be really useful for graphing over here. So now for the x-axis, I don't want to go by tens because my numbers aren't going to get that big. So I think I'll just go by ones still, right? So I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's three. Let's maybe fill in some of the numbers here. Uh, and then also in this direction, negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's negative seven. This is negative three. All right. And so I, I guess I'm doing this in green. So we'll have these points here. Now, be, keep in mind, while this is an acceptable technique for graphing, what's important is that when you're setting up your graphs by hand like this, that the scale on each axis is consistent. So for example, for the x-axis, I went by ones. And that's okay as long as I do that all the way through on the x-axis. So I can't go one, two, five, seven, a hundred. You can't skip, you can't let the numbers skip around like that. It has to be smooth and consistent for that particular axis. But when you switch to the other axis, you can choose a different scale as long as, again, you're being consistent with that scale. So for the y-axis, I chose the scale to be tens, right? And I have to stick with that. So I can't go, I can't go 10, 20, 50. I can't skip up to 50 like that. It has to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? Um, and it will distort the graph because this is, you know, you're it's you're concentrating a lot more space in the y-axis than you are the x-axis. So, so really, this is going to look like a pretty broad uh, parabola, but if but that's because it's distorted and the y-axis being kind of shoved up this way. You know, uh, if I went by ones on both axes, it would be a, a much sharper curve, and the vertex would be much further down uh, the y-axis as well. Right? I think I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be much more sharper, but it would definitely it wouldn't be as shallow of a parabola. It'd be deeper. Maybe that's a better way to describe it. All right, now before I draw this parabola, I almost forgot, we have to decide, is it a solid or a dashed? And so I, I, don't, I didn't even remember what it was. So in this case, it's solid, All right? And it's gonna be solid over here, right? So there, as well, excuse me, I don't know why I said that. Solid over here as well, correct. So uh, they'll both be solid in this case. All right. So I'm going to draw this as a parabola, solid line. Okay, and uh, it should be, again, it's not going to be jagged straight lines. It's it's a smooth curve connecting these points in, in a U-shape. Maybe I should start from over here. I think I draw better going to the right than I do to the left. Seems like, well, again, I can't do two things at once. So I have to stop talking while I draw, otherwise I won't draw it right. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. Now, that's the first inequality. The second inequality, it's a line. So we go back to the old tried and true method um, using the y-intercept, which is seven. The slope is a one. So that means you go up one to the right one, right? If you want to think of that as a fraction, it's one over one. And so we'll start at zero comma seven, positive seven. Now, remember, I would like, you know, seven, that's a pretty small number. You might say, let's just go kind of, you know, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, but you can't because 
I already established the y-axis as having a scale of 10. So because this is a positive 7, I want to go up, but I have to let the next mark here be a 10 so it's consistent with my other marks. And then 7 is going to be, you know, a little bit below that. Maybe right here. Uh, and then the slope is 1, which is going to make this especially awkward because these numbers are so shoved in together. Maybe instead of using the slope, we should use the x-intercept. I think that would be better. So let's find the x-intercept in this case. We'll plug in 0 for y. We already have the y-intercept, so this is going to find me the x-intercept. Subtract 7 from both sides, and we'll get x is equal to negative 7. So that's going to be negative 7 comma 0, which actually is going to swing me back this way. I was thinking it'd be over here, but it's still going to be over here. And again, we already decided this is going to be a solid line. So let me go ahead and use my line drawing tool. And it's going to connect those points. So it's going to look like this. All right. Okay. And so this is what the graphs look like. Now, if you're using the test point method, you have a lot of regions here to worry about. Right, let's label all of our regions that we have. We have this region right here above the line and you know uh, below the parabola. This region here, which is above the line and above the parabola. This region, which is also above, I guess it kind of connects to A in some way. Um, it's above the line but below the parabola as well. But that's still another region you'd want to check. Um, we have this region inside here, so below the line but above the parabola. And then we have this region down here, which definitely is all connected as well, right? So there's five different regions here that we might need to check if we're doing test points. So you pick a point from the region, you plug it in, not just to one of them, you have to plug it into both inequalities and make sure it works in both of them before you decide to shade it in. And if it's wrong, you have to check the next region. So again, pretty tedious. If you're using the method that I've laid out in this uh, video, then you just look to shade above or below, and you want to make sure you're doing the correct region for both inequalities. So make sure that whatever region you're shading in is satisfying above or below for both of these inequalities. And again, I've already forgotten what we had here. So this is a greater than, right? Y is greater than, which means we want to shade above, right? So we want to shade above the parabola Oops, okay, kind of glitched out on me there for some reason. Let's try that again. Shade above the parabola, right? But below the line, right? We have a less than here, which means for step three, we want to shade below. So which region, A, B, C, D, or E, is above the parabola, but below the line? And so hopefully you thought of the region here in the middle, right? This is above the parabola, but it's below the line. So it's this region right here. These would be the points, the ordered pairs that are solutions to both inequalities that we were given. All right. And again, I you don't have to sit there and perfectly shade it in on the test. And again, if it goes a little bit outside the line like I like I did here, that's okay. But this is my solution set. Okay, I have, I think, two more examples. Yeah, two more. Okay, and that last one's really kind of weird, but I want to, it's on the homework. I want to make sure that you're ready for it. I'm sorry. Oh, I just, I, I'm, I don't have good posture, so I kind of slouch when I'm sitting. And since we moved online from the whole COVID-19 thing, I've just been sitting, spending a lot of time sitting in this chair, and it's just really hard on my back because I just don't have good posture. So I need to remember to sit straight. So this one, we have four inequalities. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the video also, that with these system of inequalities, there could be more than two um, and still have a solution set. And so we have four here, but two of them are kind of unusual. So let's go ahead and write them out side by side. So we have X is less than or equal to zero. Y is less than or equal to zero. We have six X plus five Y is less than or equal to 30. And we have 5x plus 6y is less than or equal to 30. So we're trying to find the region that satisfies all four inequalities at the same time. To do that, we'll follow the same steps for each inequality. We'll follow steps 1, 2, and 3 uh, where possible. Now, step 1 for the first inequality cannot be done, right? 
Step one is to solve for y. Well, there is no y variable in this first inequality, so you're not going to be able to solve for y. So, so cannot be done. So we just skip to step two, which is we're going to graph this as an equation. So we're going to graph x equals zero on the Cartesian coordinate system. So when you have x equals a number, that is going to be a vertical line. Right. So this will be a vertical line through zero on the x-axis. So here's zero on the x-axis. We're going to draw a vertical line through zero, which means it's going to be the y-axis. And we're going to draw it as a solid line because there's an equals to. Let's just get that out of the way. These are all solid lines, right? So every graph I'm going to draw on this problem will be a solid line. And so it's going to be, let's see if I can just use the line drawing tool on here. It's going to be the y-axis right here, all right? And so that is, let's go ahead and label that so we don't forget. This is x equals zero. As far as where do I want to shade, uh, should I talk about that now? Let's go ahead and talk about it now. Let's just finish this one out. Um, I'm trying to do all the, these all in red. So let's see if I can fit that on the screen there. So where do I shade? Well, if you solve it for y, you either shade above or below. But we couldn't solve this one for y. So we have to think of it in a different way. We have to frame it differently. So when you have it solved for y, it's above or below. This one is solved for x. So what do you think the proper framing for this question should be? For y, it's above or below. For x, it's going to be left or right. So if you can solve your inequality for x, then you ask yourself the question, should I shade to the left or to the right of my graph? If it's greater than, you want to shade to the right. Whoops, I changed colors. I said I was going to try to keep all this in red. I guess that'll be okay. So we're going to shade to the right of this vertical line. If x is less than, you shade to the left, right? The reason that makes sense is because you know if you're anywhere on the cartesian coordinate system and you want x coordinates to get bigger they will get bigger to the right so if i start here for example in which direction does x get bigger it gets bigger if i go this way so i'm starting at zero the x coordinates get bigger to the right one two three they get smaller to the left so if it's x is less than you shade to the left if it's x is greater than you shade to the right so again you just have to frame it a little bit differently so now i don't want to shade this into the right just yet because I need to also consider these other three inequalities. So I'm not going to actually shade it in, but I'm going to mentally keep that in mind that when I get to the end of my problem, the region I shade in will be have to be to the right of this vertical line. All right. Step one, already done for us in this inequality. It's already solved for y. Step two, we will graph this as an equation. So we're going to graph y equals zero. This is going to be a horizontal line. So again, we're getting some unusual equations in this um, system of inequalities. This will be a horizontal line through zero on the y-axis. So here's zero on the y-axis. We're going to draw a horizontal line through that. So I'm going to do like this, I guess. And it's in blue. It doesn't stand out that well, but hopefully you can see it. Um, and then step three, do I shade above or below? This time that makes sense, right? We solved it for y. So the question, the, fr the right framing of our question should be above or below. Because y is greater than, we're going to shade above that line. All right. So again, I'm not going to actually shade anything in yet because I still have two more inequalities to map out. But when I get to the end of the problem and I'm shading in the, the answer, it needs to be to the right of the vertical line and above the horizontal line at the same time. So I have to, so that really limits me to this first quadrant here, right? To the right of the vertical line, but above the horizontal line means it's going to have to be somewhere in this region right here. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to actually mark there. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply those steps to this next inequality. We actually have to do some work here. We have to solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract 6x to the other side. We get 5y is less than or equal to 30 minus 6x. Divide by five on both sides. This time I don't have to flip the symbol around because it's not negative. I didn't divide by negative. But the five does still divide into both of these. So I'm gonna get 30 divided by five, which is six, minus six over five. Since those don't cancel out, I just have to leave it as a fraction. And then we put the X to the side of that fraction. All right. 
And so I'm not going to write out the steps like I have so far uh, for step two, but I want to graph this as an equation. I'm just not going to write out like I did over here. Uh, just imagine this as an equation. It's y equals six minus six fifths x. The y-intercept will be at six, zero comma six. The slope is negative six over five, which means I want to go down six and to the right five. Okay. And then um, solid line, right? Because it's equals two. So zero comma six, let's pick a different color. I guess I already have a different color, green which is this point right here. And then we're gonna go down six to the right five, which is gonna give me this point here on the x-axis. Connect that as a solid line. Um, so I guess I'll go this direction since all the action's kind of over here. Um, right, but it also extends this way, but like I mentioned, okay, that was a really bad uh, drawing though, but our solution has to be to the right and above here, right? So the graph over here really is not going to be relevant because the solution set is going to have to stay in this first quadrant. But I still want to draw this as accurately as I can. All right. So, and I stopped labeling for some reason. So this is y equals zero. This line is where y equals six minus six fifths x. I'm looking for where y is less than the y coordinates on this line, which means I'm going to shade below for this line. All right, so you can kind of see how this is all falling together. I'm going to start slouching again. Okay, so to the right of the vertical line, <clears throat> excuse me, above the horizontal line, below this diagonal line. So right now we're confined to this triangular region. That's going to satisfy these three inequalities, but we have one more to map out. So we're not going to shade that in just yet. Let's see what's going on with this last inequality here. So maybe, I haven't done this, I don't think much in chapter five at all. There hasn't really been much opportunity, but pause the video, see if you can map out this last inequality on the graph that we have going so far. And you go ahead and make a final decision. Where are you going to shade for the solution set to this inequality? So go ahead and go through the process for this last inequality. Uh, graph it on the Cartesian coordinate system and shade in a region based on that graph that, you, you know, based on all the graphs that we have here. But go ahead and finish out this problem and then resume the video to see if you came up with the right um, solution set. Um, I'm out of colors here, really. I have yellow, but I don't think that's going to look very well. I guess I'll just use black. Um, so solve this for y. That should have been the first thing that you did. So subtract 5x from both sides. We get 6y is less than or equal to 30 minus 5x. Divide by six on both sides, you get y is less than or equal to five minus five six x. You don't flip the symbol around because you didn't divide by a negative. So that's the first step. Step two, we're gonna graph this as an equation. So the y-intercept is at zero comma five and the slope is negative five over six. So this, because of the choice of numbers here, these two lines are really, really similar to each other, but they're just slightly off, right? Um, so this is gonna be zero comma five, which is right here. And then I'm gonna go down five to the right six. So you see how it barely crosses over that green line. So the graph you should have gotten here should look something like this. And you have to draw it carefully. Otherwise the two lines kind of merge together a little bit more than you'd like, especially in this region right here. And the final decision you should have made for this one is, whoops, I thought I switched over. I guess I didn't. Um, so is step three, we want to shade below this line as well, right? All right. Because it's also a less than, we want to shade below. So putting it all together to the right of the vertical line, above the horizontal line, below the black line and below the green line. That's gonna be this region right here, which still kind of looks like a triangle, but really isn't. It's a four-sided shape now. Uh, and that's the region that we wanna shade in. It's the region in the middle, which is probably where you would guess the answer should show up. But again, it doesn't have to. It could have been this region right here, for example. If they picked above, it would have been this little crevice right here, but they picked below, so it's gonna be this region right here. So let me see if I can stay in the lines. Um, okay. 
So it's going to be this region right here. Okay. It doesn't want to shade in for some reason. Okay, I'll just leave it like that. All right, last example. Again, I hit the one hour mark. I These videos really should be shorter. I guess I'm just not trying my best to keep moving and keep talking as quickly as I can. So I apologize for that. Hopefully, hopefully they're still bearable enough to watch. Um, so here we have a couple of odd. The, the, the final answer in this case is kind of fun, actually, I think. Um, but these are kind of some odd inequalities to have in this section because they each only have one variable, right? So this section mostly is about inequalities of two variables, but this particular problem really only gives us um, inequalities with one variable, but they're different, right? This one has X, the other one has Y. To solve this, it is, a, it is an absolute value inequality, which we have not seen since I think chapter one. And the way you solve this is kind of like solving um, an uh, absolute value equation. And that is you split it up. The first inequality will be an exact copy of the original. So I just copy it down without the absolute value. The second one, you copy it down the same, except you make two changes. One change is you make the right-hand side negative, just like you would if it was an equation. But the other change is that you want to flip the symbol around the other way. That's just how these absolute value inequalities work. Again, if you wanted me to put another 20 minutes on this video, I could go back and explain why that has to work the way it does, but I'm not going to do that at this point. Maybe I'll make another video for that when I record videos for chapter one, which I probably will have to do at some point. Um, and then you're supposed to put an and or an or here. And because this is a less than, this is going to be an and. If this was a greater than, it would be an or. But ors really don't have a place in this in this section. Everything in this section is an and. So it'd be weird if they put an or here anyways. Now I can solve each of these for x. So I'll add one to both sides and I'll get x has to be less than six. Do the same thing here. And I have to get x has to be greater than negative four. So really what you're going to end up with is two inequalities out of this instead of just one, right? You thought you thought you only had two inequalities in this whole problem, but really you're going to have four because this gives you two different inequalities. This is going to do the same thing. Now I'm trying to follow the steps that were outlined at the beginning, which is step one, solve this for Y, but there is no Y to solve for here. So instead I'm solving it for X and I'm going to make that same adjustment we did in the last problem. Because it's solved for X, I will either shade to the left or to the right for both of these, right? In fact, let's just go ahead and finish that out. So I'm going to graph both of these on the same Cartesian coordinate system. Sorry, I said that kind of funny. So I'm going to graph X equals six and X equals negative four. I'm going to graph both of these. These are two different graphs. They're both vertical lines, just like we saw in um, the previous problem, right? So this will be a vertical line that goes through six on the X axis. This will be a vertical line that goes through negative four on the X axis. So let's go ahead and draw that graph up here. So here is um, six right, on the X axis. Now I can't use my line graphing tool because it only does solid lines. And this one should be a dashed line, right? There's no equals to here. So we have to graph this as a dashed line, graph this one as a dashed line as well. I'm circling here to show there's no bar underneath, right? So that means there's no equals to, which means it should be a dash line. So I'm gonna have to try to draw this by hand the best I can. Um, okay. I can't talk while I'm doing it because then I'll mess up. All right, so this is where X is equal to six. We also have X equals negative four. That's right here. So also dash line through negative four. I'll stop talking. All right. And then we'll talk about shading here in just a minute. So that'll be step three. All right, we'll get to that in just a minute. Let's do the same thing over here, right? Step one, solve this for Y. We'll start by splitting this up. We get Y minus one is less than four. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure out what this one should look like. All right? So what you should have come up with is greater than, because you got to flip the symbol around and then negative four. Most students remember to make the four negative, but my recollection from all the papers I've graded is 
that a lot of students forget this little detail. You got to flip the symbol around the other way for this. It's not because you're dividing by a negative on both sides, at least not directly, but that's just the way it needs to get set up. And again, this is going to be an and. I guess we, you know, you can maybe skip that detail because all of these are ands, but I don't know, it just feels wrong to me. Like you need to connect those with some word. And the proper word here is an and because this is a less than, it becomes an and. Again, we learn, we, we study that back in chapter one. So you might want to go back and look at your notes uh, about why that's the case. All right. Solve each of these for y. We get y is less than five for the first one. And we get y is greater than negative three for the second one. Still an and here. And so we get these two, which are horizontal lines, like we just saw on the previous problem. So this is going to give me y equals five. So this is for step two again. We want to graph y equals five and y equals negative three. They're going to be dashed lines, just like they were over here. And so, but this will be horizontal instead of vertical through five on the y-axis and through negative three on the y-axis. So this is going to, here's five on the y-axis. So it's going to be a dashed horizontal line. I can't talk while I'm drawing because I'll mess up. It'll be a dashed line, horizontal line through five on the y-axis. Here's negative three. And so you get those two lines, right? So this is y equals five, y equals negative three. And we did them as dashed lines for the same reason, right? There's no equals to here. So these are going to be dashed. I'll just go ahead and write that down. All right. Now, step three. So what's fun about this problem to me is it's a tic-tac-toe grid, right? You have two vertical lines, two horizontal lines. You get nine different regions here. Only one of them will satisfy all four of these inequalities at the same time. And you, if you wanted to make a guess, your guess is probably right. I think it's the region in the middle, but let's confirm that by going back and seeing where I should be shading in to satisfy all four of these inequalities. So I want to shade to, I want X to be less than six. So here's where X is equal to six, this vertical line right here. Every X coordinate here is six, but I want points where the X coordinates are less than six. That's going to be to the left of that, right? So this is gonna to be to the left of x equals six, but I want the x coordinates to be bigger than negative four. Here's where the x coordinates equal negative four, but I want my x coordinates to be bigger than negative four, which will be to the right of that vertical line. So I'm gonna shade to the left of this vertical line, but to the right of this one. So it's gonna be in between the two vertical lines. Here I want x to be less than five, or not X, I said the wrong letter, sorry. I want Y to be less than five. Um, and this one works just like normal, right? Because it's solved for Y, it's above or below, right? Where do the Y coordinates get smaller than five? It'll be below that horizontal line. All the Y coordinates here are equal to five, but I want Y coordinates for my points to be smaller than five. That's gonna be below that horizontal line. So below this line, but I want them to be bigger than negative three. So on this line, the Y coordinates equal negative three. I want points where the Y coordinates are bigger than negative three. That's going to be above that horizontal line. So if you take all four of these into account, the region that matches all four of these criteria is the region in the middle. It's to the right of this vertical line, but to the left of this one, below that horizontal line, but above this one, it's the re it's the square in the middle and I guess it's not a square. It's the rectangle in the middle. All right. And so let me go ahead and shade that in. All right. And again, try to stay in the lines when you're doing this on the test. All right. And then shade in the middle. But like I said, don't feel like you have to sit there and shade in every little space in this region. Um, just a good scribble here is enough for me to know your intention, the, the region that you've selected and that you know to shade that region in. Uh, thank you for watching this video. That concludes section 5.5.